Thanks for joining us here. I'm Ken Brown, and if something has sparked your curiosity and you'd like to continue some conversation about this, then call me. I'll look forward to spending some time with you. Thank you. Markets go through cycles and perpetually change. Research in the field of behavioral finance and economics reveals how market fluctuations affect the emotions and behaviors of investors, which ultimately can affect the performance of their portfolio. We don't readily alter investment policy based on market dynamics. A key value proposition to our service is cultivating intentional investment behavioral responses. Not surprisingly, as market value increases, so does the mood of the investor improve. When market direction changes downward, investors' moods follow. We begin to question our decision and worry grows as values fall. The important thing to remember is that times when we feel the most confident can be the times of greatest financial risk. By the same token, at the times when we lose heart and we want to make dramatic changes, we may be right around the corner from opportunity. Take, for example, this graph comparing equity mutual fund flows to the well-known Russell 3000 index. Two points in time, the peak of euphoria experienced just before the dot-com bubble and the despondency at the bottom of the Great Recession. Well, they highlight the relationships between emotion, opportunity, and risk and market cycles. We emphasize a long-term, conservative approach centered on budgeting risk. Because despite the extreme emotions surrounding events like these, you'll notice the upward trend of the index. That's the perspective we try to maintain as we navigate an ever-changing market. Two languages seem to be in play when discussing risk. Individual investors typically view risk as the chance that they might lose their money. Fear of losing your money is rational, but describing risk in this dimension alone can be too narrow and limiting. It can cause some investors, especially in difficult markets, to not only avoid taking on new risks, which might allow them to achieve higher returns, but they might also choose to shed the risk they had earlier accepted removing themselves from the market in hopes of timing their way back in when the outlook has improved. Market timing is impossible and often leads investors into missing some of the best opportunities. The odds favor investors who remain committed to their investment policy, focused on using the environment at hand to their advantage. Because the investment industry, including fiduciary committees and institutional boards, as well as advisors and professional money managers, well, they speak a different language, where risk is defined and understood in mathematical terms of volatility. The industry views volatility in part as an opportunity to generate excess returns on the investment relative to its benchmark. We call that alpha. But when Excess returns can be achieved for a reasonable acceptance of additional incremental risk. It's viewed as a good thing. It's important to understand these languages to keep both views in focus, to maintain a more complete understanding of risk. In addition to understanding the languages of risk, it's important to understand what components influence your risk budget and how we define them. Risk tolerance is an emotional response to the chance of loss or the degree of willingness to tolerate changing values or volatility. Risk capacity, on the other hand, is a quantitative financial awareness of the impact of loss on your ability to achieve your goals. We combine these concepts to form your risk budget and we favor whichever factor is more limiting to you. Most individuals and organizations will identify with one of these risk budget profiles. First, there's low tolerance, low capacity. That means you can't afford much risk and neither are you comfortable with it. Low tolerance, high capacity investors can afford high amounts of risk, but just don't like risk. 
There are high tolerance, high capacity clients who can afford risk and are willing to accept it and often enjoy it. Finally, low capacity but high tolerance investors mean they can't afford the risk, but they seem somehow willing to take on high amounts of it. We work with three of the four types, but those whose appetite for risk greatly exceeds their capacity for it do not fit our client profile. To serve that client, we would be required to construct portfolios outside prudent boundaries and highly unlikely to fulfill the objectives. As no two clients' financial situation are identical, neither are their risk budgets. What we actively strive for in our clients' portfolios is the ideal return target for the least amount of risk. We call it smart risk-taking, otherwise known as optimization. A well-constructed risk budget is the most critical element of sound investment policy. Not a discussion of return first, but the construction of the risk budget. It addresses how much risk you can afford as well as how much you're comfortable living with, favoring whichever factor is more limiting to you. Well, a focus on the relationship between risk and reward will create a more tolerable experience, and that's key. We think you'll agree the best surprise is no surprise. If you understand and have been prepared for likely outcomes, they won't surprise you. Increasing your confidence and comfort in your plan improves your odds of achieving the rewards you seek over time because you won't abandon the plan. We want our clients compensated for risk they accept and compensated properly when they seek to avoid risk. A risk budget allows you to compare and consider opportunities that compensate you for the risk you accept within your budget. Because this is about you, we make adaptations to your investment policy when your needs or objectives change rather than as a response to avoid market volatility. It's your goal out on that horizon, and we're here to help you take the next steps towards it.